going to start our session by inviting artist Patwardhan to start with the keynote. Sudhir Patwardhan is a contemporary painter and was a practicing radiologist until recently. Post 2005, he became a full time artist. The cityscape features prominently in his canvases and in them reflect the lives of the urban middle class and the working class. Patwardhan's works are in the permanent collection of National Gallery of Modern Art, New Delhi and Mumbai, the Peabody Essex Museum, Salem and USA, and other prominent private and public collections. Today, Mr. Patwardhan will be talking about creative processes. Please give a round of applause. Passive areas of color that you are dealing with, 
you are dealing with the way the roof and the head move within the paint. You are dealing with active forces. And it is in this sense that I think the two words, structure and design, similarly. Given the similarities in the two terms, structure and design, there is, however, one important difference. And this has to do with the fields or the areas that we apply these words to. Art on one hand, and on the other hand, architecture, production, industrial design, graphic design, etc. The difference between art and design has of course been extensively written on, but it is worth recapitulating the difference here. Designing is rightly seen as a problem solving activity. It is the application of your research, your intelligence and your creativity to a specifically defined problem at hand. You know what you want to achieve and you are seeking the best way, maybe the most innovative way or the most creative way to achieve that. But the result will be judged by how well you have achieved or fulfilled this preset goal or aim. In art, on the other hand, and in painting, you do not know beforehand what you want to achieve. You are in search of what you want to say, what you want to express. As you go along, you will of course be faced with the problems that designers are faced with. And you will use similar tactics and similar methods in solving those problems. But you do not have a well-defined goal towards which you are progressing. You are seeking the problem as much as you are seeking a solution. This seems to be the most important difference between art and design. And this has been written about. But one can't insist on the finality of this difference. One can't say that this is the one thing that separates design and art. As all practitioners know, it becomes difficult to hold on to this difference at times. A designer or an architect may allow himself the freedom to overstep his dream, to go beyond his dream and achieve something radical. A building may not serve 100% the purpose for which it was supposed to be built, but it may still become a landmark building. It may still become an important building. And on the other hand, thinking of artists, thinking of a filmmaker, for example, who is an artist, he will have to know beforehand what he wants to achieve. And he will have to work out in detail how to achieve this. Because he has to work with so many people. He has to instruct this cameraman, this editor, everyone, what he wants to achieve. So, in this case, it is opposite. That you realize that there are no categories, though there is a difference between art and design, that both are so closely interrelated and so intimately interrelated that there are no water type categories. So it's important to remember that categories are good, are useful to understand, but they also sometimes become an impediment. Now, onto the slides I want to share with you. The subject of my talk has been variously mentioned as a process, as she just mentioned, or contemporary art in different versions of the program sent out. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I will not be covering anything as broad as contemporary art, nor as deep as the creative process. I will speak mostly of my own work on how I approach my paintings, what goes into them, what I seek to express through them, and finally, what I think is the function of structure or design in them. To end my talk, I will
will show a few examples of masterworks from great paintings from different historical periods. These works, to my mind, achieve what great art always does. It changes the way we look at the world and it changes the way we look at ourselves. So, on to the slides now. To start with, the painter's craft. Observation, expression, structure or design. This is of course a simplification and it is not necessarily applicable to all artists. Each artist will have his own way of understanding his process. This is a way in which I find it useful to think of my work or my process. Observation is of course the kind of research, the kind of gathering of information in other, in other areas. Understanding, trying to understand the world. Observing and depicting the world around us. This is one of my paintings called House Across the Street. But immediately I want to show you something else. Because my style of working is the realistic style in which you might feel this is observation. This is correct observation. But that is not necessarily so. Here is a Warley painter who is also observing. He is also observing contemporary reality. He is not only observing or painting uh, the past. He is painting uh, all these uh, road, uh, uh, you know, machines and high rail buildings. On the other hand, he is the Mughal painter who has painted this fantastic wood pen, yellow, yellow black wood pen. Both these styles are different. They are different from my style I use. But all these artists, all of us, are observing reality. So stylistically, even if it is different, this is a process of observation. And that is an important element for any artist. You may be observing, as I said, first, a very newly painted. I'll just go back to the slide that I showed you. Okay. What is one observing here? And it's also of course, observing the building, but you will notice one is also observing the light as it is falling on the building. And one knows that in the next five minutes, that light is going to change, that shadow is going to change. So there are various things that one is observing in reality. One may be observing run-down buildings, people in run-down buildings. Painting is for a local hero. So one comes across all kinds of people, and something in the general, something in the, the way in which the person sees himself, writes you. So one is observing people, one is observing buildings, one is observing the light, one is observing the atmosphere, one is observing incidences. Death on the street, name of this painting is. What happens around us when we look? The way in which different people respond to an incident on the street. Someone has fallen, some people are concerned, some people are not concerned, some people are in their own world, etc. etc. Or one may be observing very strange things. This is a lady in a train in Europe, and her reflection in the glass when I was sitting opposite to her. And because a double glass is used, the reflection is split. And this split reflection creates a strange image. So, there are various kinds of things that one observes. Some things appeal to you, some things, some things make you angry, some things make you happy, and some things just intrigue you. So there are various elements of uh, the world that you want to observe and you want to depict. The other, as I said, is expression. All human 
human beings, all people, all, all living beings in fact, need to externalize what they are feeling and what they are thinking. We all need to bring out from within our responses and our feelings, our inner, whatever is happening within us. We need to externalize this. And this externalization is the act of expression. Here you see, we stay in Pana and there is an area which is very prone to flooding. So, this is a, it is an observation also. As I said, there are no kind of, when one makes these divisions between observation, expression and structure, one must realize that everything overlaps. When you are observing, you are also expressing. When you are feeling, when you are looking at something and wanting to express that, you are also observing. So here you are expressing a feeling of concern of, of concern for other human beings in a certain situation. Here you may be expressing an internal kind of frustration, internal turmoil, spending called skin. It's a feeling that your life has become enclosed, you want to get out of it. Somehow you want to touch your heart yourself, you want to do something. There are elements of violence that we are witness to, and this creates great, of a great element of anguish. One sees it on the television, one sees it in life, one hears about it, one reads about it. So in all this, there is a need sometimes that you want to say something about this. You want to say, you want to talk about the injustice, you want to take about the, you talk about the madness, the insensitivity of what is happening. But there are other kinds of feelings that you want to express. This is a thinking called, uh, I forget the title now, uh, but it's expressing a more gentle feeling. So all these different kinds of feelings that one goes through when living our life need externalization and painting or any art is a means to externalize. Feelings. Again, to draw attention to the fact that no one particular style is more expressive than the other. Both the works are mine, and if you look at different artists' works, you will find that they are very different in style. But both are using a particular style to express a certain kind of emotion. Here, on, on one hand, it's a very rapidly done sketch in the still. On the other hand, it's a very carefully done portrait in paint. So either way, the expression, uh, expression in the sense, two senses. Expression on the face of the person you are depicting and also expression as what you are bringing out, your feeling for these people. And I said earlier that expression all of us need to externalize, not just our feelings, but also our thoughts. What are they thinking about? This is a painting called Family Fiction. It's a view of a family. There is there's an old man standing, there is a young boy, a very young baby, a lady. And on the other side of the painting, there are images that don't look as if they could belong to this family. There's someone with a gun. This is obviously coming from a film. So these images are coming from a fiction, a film. So the advertising images, images of violence that enter our house through television screens, through other media. And another nude woman on the side is a painting by the famous French painter Cezanne. So all these things are part of our living, are part of our life. And we think about them. We respond to them. So thoughts are also something that one needs to formulate. It's not just feelings. You don't respond to the word only with feeling, you also respond with thoughts. So thoughts are another thing that you express. This is a painting for difficulty in telling the truth. It's an image of a 
artist sitting in front of a painting and, and it, a self-portrait is there in that painting and the artist is seen, sitting, looking at it. And you see a window in front of you and you see a window on the side. The window that is in front of you is painted as, to represent a window that is painted in the painting. It's a window painted painting. And the window on the side is supposed to be a real window, but obviously it is also a painting. So, whenever you speak of anything, whenever you express anything, whenever you tell someone anything, you are representing the world in some way. Representation is something that human beings are always doing. Now, the question of, is it true representation or not, always comes up. And there is always a difficulty in telling the truth, because you cannot get away from language. We will always be speaking through a medium, and the medium will always be between us and the world. So this this question, how do you address this question? This is a thought. You realize that you want to touch the world, but you will touch the world only through a medium. You want to speak of the world, but you speak of it only through something else. So these are the thoughts that are expressed. In green. I'm showing you an image of the recent work that I have done. It is called Building a Home, Exploring the World. I want to show this only because I have used a lot of quotations in this thing. So I have painted the whole image, but in the middle part, that is a quotation from another painter. A 17th century Flemish painting. Behind that is a car which is from a Russian architect, Tatlin's car, which was not built but which a model exists. And there are quotations again on to you on the top. There is text. So when we say we want to talk, when, when, we, when a painter wants to externalize or talk about his thoughts, not just his feelings but also his thoughts, he may introduce into the work text. He may quote someone. Something appeals to you, you want to quote it. You bring it up, you put it in the painting. When you read that text, some images, some thoughts occur to you, and then you relate the whole to the image in the work. So this is a process in painting. It's not just about representing the world realistically or expressing your feelings, it is also about thinking. And I will just show you another old image, miniature painting, which is the, the text is in Tanganyi in, in and it is a Ramayana. And this is an image of Ram killing a demon. So this is a process that has always been used. In all miniatures, you will see in, in Mughal miniatures, in Marathi miniatures, there may be a poem on top. The artist is responding to that. So this is the way in which thoughts, feelings are expressed in painting. Now on to the last and the third kind of important thing, structure. Structure or design is what gives both observation and expression pictorial being. What does that mean? If I am a painter, if I am making paintings, then my painting must have pictorial being. Otherwise, what happens if you just make observations and present them without giving it a certain structure. Those will be just reporting, reporting facts. You read something in the newspaper, it's a reported fact. So, observation can just become reported facts, or expression of feeling might just become sentiment, or expression of, of thoughts might be just illustration of that thought. To go beyond just illustration or sentimentality, or 
to go beyond just reporting facts. You must structure, you must design that painting or that work of art or whatever in a certain way. You see, obviously, everyone can identify this. Okay. What is the structure in this? Immediately you might feel it's the structure of the flyover. But as important as the structure of the flyover are the negative spaces. We call them negative, but in painting they no longer remain positive and negative spaces. The sky that seen. So the form of the sky that envelops the structure is as important to give pictorial meaning to that. If I change that angle slightly, the meaning of the flyover will not change, so, but the meaning of the painting will change. If I move 5 meters or 5 feet to the right and, and look at the flyover, the shape of the sky will change, the shape of other things will change. So the meaning changes. The pictorial meaning is that kind of meaning. Now I'm showing you things where both these things come together. Observation and feeling, observation and thoughts. They all come together in a certain structured form. The thought about the relationship between power and the powerless, of exploitation, of people in power exploiting people to lack power. So a certain kind of structure in which these two figures are built. Another painting from the same series that we saw earlier about the flags. So, the feeling about feeling pity for or empathizing with the person who is in such a situation that is there, then you think about why flags occur, this, that, all that is there. But the pictorial meaning of this particular image comes through the way in which that lady figure is situated between the kind of planes that are there at the background, on the side, in the left corner, lower corner. So this structure is what gives that particular feeling and thought its unique form. The old painting called City, where space is treated in different ways. And each individual is occupying a certain space and how these spaces come into relationship with each other. Another painting called Nostalgia, where internal spaces and external spaces, where the whole landscape extending up to the horizon on a, in one half and internal space of a gallery, of a room, of someone sitting in the room, of someone sitting behind in the room, so all these different to bring together all this. What does it mean to bring together all this? There are experiences where you're standing inside your room, it's a dark room inside, and you walk up into the balcony and you then breathe, take in a deep breath and look at the landscape. In a short period of a minute, you have experienced transition. And this kind of transition you might want to structure in a certain way into an image. Another painting called Violin Sun. Here the structure is much more complex. There are different kind of compartments in the painting. In the lower part, on one side there are people going, on the other side there are people coming. Upper part, there is someone who's fallen and big people are trying to support them, or maybe they are the ones who have stabbed them or something. On the other side, an old man and a woman and a baby. So all these, as, as you might walk through your neighborhood, you come across all these things. And then at the end of the day, all these experiences you want to bring together into some kind of an understanding. What is happening here? There is violence happening, but there is also life. There is also this stuff between, there is also new babies being born, there is also the grandfather or whatever. But people are going and coming. This will continue. And this cycle will continue. So we have thought about life going on in that sense. 
another form of structure where landscape is structured as a map. This is an area where I stayed when I was a child. And then I remember, I always remembered it as a map. And I knew that our house was in one left corner and my friend's house was in the right upper corner. How did this happen in my mind? How did this mapping take place? My experience of moving about in that area that automatically becomes a map. And it always happens with us. You're familiar with one space and when you're trying to tell someone how to go, you're always saying, you're not pointing your finger. You have to say, you know, you know, you know. So you, this mapping is always the key place. So how to make an image of a map? Another painting called Form, in which there is observation about the landscape, there is observation about the changing kind of landscape, there is observation also about the status of workers, of, of a person who is, is, is not, I mean this is a post, like, you know, the, the, new, the new era after the 90s, when people are, more people are dependent on daily jobs. And the beauty of the ties, the beauty of what the person does, and the misery of his life. So there's a thought about that. And the word, the mina, the possibility of confidence. Yeah, now we go on to the paintings of the masters. I not say much, but just each one of these paintings has, when I say, the great paintings make us see the world in a different way and changes us. Each one of these paintings has been experienced like that. It has been that kind of experience for me personally. Whenever I've encountered these paintings, it has changed the way in which I have seen things. Vermeer, Dutch, 17th century, made pouring milk. The stillness of that moment, the light that comes from the window, and the space in which she stands. Once you see this painting, you'll always relate to rooms in which light comes in from one side in a different way. A similar image. It is a room, it is a door, but it's a, conceived in an entirely different way. This is Vinod Bihari Mukherjee from Shantini Ketan, painted in 1935. So stylistically it's very different, it's very flat, the way in which it's not the kind of realistic image where you see the perspective of the table and things like that. They are all pressed down. But the sensitivity with which each chair or each pen or each element on that low table or brushes are painted, it's the same sensitivity, similar sensitivity, but it's an entirely different kind of feeling. So, this, after seeing this, the way in which when you walk into a room and you see the bar end of the room and the, what is close to you, the relationship between the bar and middle ground and the background changes. So you realize that your relationship to rooms can change. And you encounter these paintings. Tayyab Mehta Kali. This is a modernist painting, painted in 1885. Absolute simplification of form. You might say that observation is reduced to an absolute minimum, and expression is taken to breaking point. This is, a, this is a painting in which you actually feel your own bones and muscles being torn up when you stand in front of it. And it is a feeling of the kind of the kind of image. Even in, in Calcutta, if you go to the Kali temple and you and you see the whole atmosphere there, and you can put put aside all the uh, all the other thing, all the kind of people trying to make money out of you, but if you can put that aside and encounter the image 
And this is what I have actually said that when you encounter that image, inspire them to make a whole series of works that have the same kind of power. Another religious painting from uh, uh, a Flemish painting, Rotter van der Weyden. Structure in this is, is so important that disposition of Christ's being got down from the cross and the way in which his mother is collapsing and the figures, vertical figures and the uh, figures at an angle of Christ. The way in which this is structured in a very narrow kind of receiving space within that, the arrangement of these figures. When you stand in this, this is a painting in in, uh, in Spain, in, in the Prado. When you stand in front of this painting, it's absolutely, you'll never be the same person again, almost, having, having seen this kind of. And what has done this, it's the structure of the painting that has done it. That is the point. It's not just observation, it's not just the feeling. But because that feeling has been given, there are millions of paintings of Christ's disposition. Between 1500 and 1900, Europe must have produced thousands of paintings of the disposition. But not all those paintings, because the subject is the same, have the same art. The art comes from that particular artist being able to give pictorial meaning to that feeling. This marvelous Jahangiri, Mughal Jahangiri period painting, gem like. Each, each quality of the color, the fold behind Jange sitting in that small window is almost the same size as all these four years. And the gem like quality of the crowd, there's so much happening. And yet, the kind of discreet kind of, there's, there's no sense of chaos in that sense. John Constable, British painter, classic, 19th century. I am showing you that it gives you an appearance of a snapshot. Yeah, someone is walking along and just sees something nice and he clicks a shot. It's as natural as something that may have just happened. But if you try to analyze the painting, how has this been achieved? And there are there are critics who have analyzed it in so many different ways. How is that exact placement of the tree, exact placement of the branches, exact, even to the exact placement of the dog down in blue and the white of his nose, even that is part of the structure of the book. And it is analyzed in that sense. And so that this creation of a very natural thing just, it's just happened, but it didn't just happen. John Constable B structure, make each part of this work in a certain way. And that's what gives us the pleasure of being able to see something that's just happened. And lastly, this Rajput, uh, Rajasthani, early 17th century, Rajmala painting. Here again, there is observation, this beautiful observation of the trees, of the leaves, of the lotuses, and they are infused with feeling, a feeling for nature and a sensuous feeling for the human form. And this nature and human form are so kind of, uh, so combined in a sense. And, and this whole kind of sensuality of nature and the human body and our response to that is brought up in such a deep kind of way that this is one of the supreme examples of Rajasthani uh, painting. Thank you. I think that is what I have to say. Thank you.
which is why like you are the only one and I don't know to make is in the room who actually has a Wikipedia page. <laughs> So when we searched for all the speakers and we were like about the speaker and we had to take a list of it, we found a Wikipedia page about it. So that is how the imagination and the intellectual. So thank you for being uh, a part of our program. So